Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about batteries, particularly battery options if you want to fly for a little bit longer. Now I did a video a couple of weeks ago with a gentleman called Marcus Muller. Now Marcus is the guy behind the eCalc site and we did three videos. One was about how can you fly faster, how can you uh, make it easier to launch and the last one we did, which is probably the most complicated kind of, was how can you fly for longer. And that one we talked about things like Carson speed and choosing motor and prop combos to give you the most efficient way to transfer the power from your battery to thrust that will move your model through the air. But the other thing we talked about in that video was basically the more milliamp hours you can fit inside your model, the longer you're going to fly. But there was quite a few good questions on comments on that video and I thought it's worthwhile me updating you with some of the testing that I'm doing because obviously we all kind of know the standard LiPo batteries that we know and love in the hobby and LiPo batteries in particular have been getting bigger and bigger uh, as they need to deliver more and more current for the battery size. So that means the C rating is increasing and they're getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Now that is kind of fine if you only want to fly for a handful of minutes and you don't mind the extra weight. However, for people like me that are big into wing flying, uh, that isn't always the best option. There's actually other options about and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So we're going to talk about uh, 18650 batteries as well, lithium ion batteries. Uh, these are something that I'm using a lot to extend flight times. You can get them in uh, kind of 4S packs that look a bit like this. You can also get them in 4S 2P packs. So this is two of these in parallel, which doubles the amount of current that you can get because that is one of the challenges with these particular batteries. Uh, they don't give you the high current that a LiPo will. But there's also a new kid in town and that is what is inside this pack, 21700s. Physically just a little bit larger than 18650s, but could be the next hot thing in the hobby. So let me jump on the bench and I'll go through some of this, talk about some of the comparisons, the do's and don'ts, and hopefully we'll uh, kind of give you an idea of things that you can try to get more milliamp hours in a pack that will actually fit inside your model. So the first one we'll start off with is let's have a look at lithium ion cells, specifically the 18650 style batteries that we are starting to use a lot more in the hobby. So here is a selection of some of the 18650 lithium ion cells that I use regularly here. So both of these are uh, these long thin style. These are actually 4S 2P um, setups, give you a little bit more uh, current for the size of battery, usually 6000 in terms of this um, long RER and 7000 in terms of this Enduro pack from 3DXR. Things like the AR Wing Pro are really designed around these packs. They're uh, reasonably heavy, but uh, because of the relatively low rating, it's only 2 to 10C, so that's going to be 14 to 70 amps. Uh, it's great for those kind of uh, models. Some of the really big ones here, uh, this is one that I got from 3DXR that I actually use to charge packs in the field. Uh, you can really stack up an awful lot of these cells together. This one is a 4S 4P, which is why we get such an incredible amount of capacity in here. So this is great for a field charger. Some of the smaller ones that are used in other things, we have a 3S one uh, and we also have a 2S from ZOHD and also this one here from GEP RC. This is one that I actually use in a couple of smaller wings and I'm also using it on things like my uh, baby crocodile and things like that, four inch quads. Now to give you an idea of the, the weights on these, just so you can see how heavy they are, um, this thing weighs about 201 grams. These longer ones here, try and get it so that the whole thing's on the scale, there we go, is about 410. So for only 410 grams, we're getting a whopping 7,000 milliamp hours. Now, there are a couple of little issues with these. Uh, the cells in here vary tremendously in terms of quality. Not only do you have to worry about things like what the rating is, so VT5 
C and VT6 are kind of the high current cells uh, that are quite tricky to get hold of at the moment. There seems to be shortages of some of the raw materials for batteries. But there's also grades for these cells as well. And typically, none of the packs are actually telling me what grade of cells there are inside. Grade A is the best. Uh, typically, the way it works is that somebody like a Tesla or a Dyson will order millions of these 18650 cells, but only take the very best to put in their products. And the ones that don't pass that test will be put out into the general market. So that means that typically uh, you'll have grade C, D, E, F, G, and so on throughout the alphabet, and they will all perform differently. Uh, so be aware of that when you're buying these cells. Uh, they vary enormously in terms of the quality of the cells inside. So try and get them from a manufacturer that's trying to put a little bit of time and effort into making sure this stuff works. You're really looking to make sure that they're kind of based on VTC6 cells, particularly if you're looking for the higher C ratings. So the next one we'll have a look at is one that's a bit wackier. This is a 21700 pack. Similar kind of technology to the 18650, a little bit physically larger, but that slight increase in overall physical size gives quite an increase in terms of the capacity that you get out of a pack of this size. So this is my test pack. This is actually for 21700 cells. If you're interested, these are P42A cells in here. So that gives me a 4S1P 4200 milliamp hour setup. Now, I need to say a massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR. Uh, he's really struggling to get these cells in at the moment. He managed to get his hands on six of them, I think it was, and he very kindly put four in a pack for me to test out. Now, there are a couple of advantages of these over the 18650 cells that we've already had a look at. The main one is, is the cells, the 21700 cells, are a little bit physically bigger than the 18650s. So the way it works is an 18650 is actually 18 millimeters across and 65 millimeters long, whereas this is 21 millimeters in diameter and 700 millimeters long. So that doesn't sound like a massive increase, a little bit wider and a little bit deeper, but it gives about 46% more capacity, more room inside the cells because of that bigger volume. Now, this results in a more milliamp hour capacity in the cells. So this is a 3,000, 3, this is a 4,200. So again, that 3,000 is weighing about 201 grams. This thing is weighing about 286 grams. Now, because it's slightly physically bigger, hopefully you can kind of see that, move the scales out of the way a little bit. Uh, because it's slightly physically bigger, it does mean that it won't fit in everything. Sadly, this will not fit in my Diatone Ripper, but it fits beautifully in the nose of something like my Atom RC Dolphin. It's brilliant for that. And because of the weight, it's not adding ridiculous amounts of weight for a 4200 milliamp hour pack. Now, both of these have the same kind of voltage ranges. So empty on an 18650 or a 21700 lithium ion pack is about three and a half volts a cell and 4.2 volts a cell is fully charged. Now that means that with lithium ion technology, you have to be a little bit careful. You can fly it to a much lower voltage and you have to make sure that your ESCs and your flight controller or whatever it is in the model is happy to go down to that voltage because that voltage is typically way below what would normally potentially trigger a low voltage condition, an LVC problem with one of the ESCs or something else. So if you want to get the maximum range out of either of these cells, then do make sure that you're turning down your low voltage cutoff and you're also making sure that the voltage alarms and things in stuff like iNav, beta flight, whatever it is you're running, is set appropriately too. The only challenge with these at the moment is the 21700 cells are fantastically tricky to get hold of. Uh, so hopefully if Ben gets more and starts to sell them, I will be getting a couple more packs for this because this is a really cute way to put quite a few milliamp hours with a decent current rating in a model. 
And the last one we'll talk about is GERD LiPo batteries. Now the cool thing is, is that the battery that I was using inside my Diatone Ripper was this one. This is a 4S battery, it's one of the graphene things from Hobby King. And for the same size of battery, I can now get this thing at the top. This is a Tattoo battery, a 2200, that's actually pretty exactly the same size and with three grams in it, pretty much the same weight, but about, what's that, about 70% more capacity. So that would equate to potentially 70% more flight time. So let me jump on the bench and go through and show you this because I'm so pleased that people like Tattoo are actually bothering to make batteries for those of us who don't need 100C in their packs. Last one to talk about is the good old LiPo battery. Now, normally I'm sticking in the kind of LiPo batteries, the generic ones from places like Hobby King. This is the graphene thing. This is a 4S battery and it weighs 231 grams. Now, sometimes I physically cannot fit a battery of this size into a model. There just isn't the room, and it's usually the length that's the problem. In those situations, I've been having to use a much smaller battery, something like this 1.3 amp or 1300 milliamp hour pack. Now, this is a 75C discharge. It's a blooming hefty pack. That's 177 grams. However, that can potentially give you quite short flight times because both of these packs are really aimed at people that need to pull a ridiculous amount of current out of the pack. Multi-rotors or high-performance fixed wings. The really cool thing is, for about the same weight as a 1300, 177, this with a 181 gram weight is actually a 2200 pack. So this has the same capacity as this battery, but is a fraction of the size. Now this is only a 45C battery compared to the 65C, but this will physically fit in a place that you could only fit a 1.3 or a 1300 pack before. So that gives you 900 more milliamp hours in this pack for about three grams more weight, and it will fit in the same area as this. And this is one of the new long-range batteries from Tattoo. I'm so pleased that battery manufacturers have realized that, you know what, we don't all need these big heavy packs with super high C ratings that will give us 150, 160 amps. Actually, something like this is brilliant for a small wing. So in summary, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. If we look at how many milliamp hours you get per gram, if we look at the 21700 pack, we get a whopping 14.85 milliamp hours per gram. Compare that with the 18650 pack, that's almost the same. That's a 14.95 milliamp hours per gram. And then for the something like a 2200 LiPo, this traditional LiPo pack, that's 8.8. 1, 1 milliamp hours per gram. So that's nearly half of what you can get in terms of energy density when you compare LiPo with lithium ion packs. But the nice thing is we have this option from Tattoo now where they're starting to make these long range versions which are packs that are physically smaller and also have slightly lower C ratings, perfect for single engine wings. This has 12.15 milliamp hours per gram, and that's a 2200 milliamp hour pack with 45C. So that's still capable of delivering a whopping 99 amps at only 181 grams. So what does this mean for flying times? Well, if you are cruising, let's do it for easy maths, at about 30 miles per hour in your fixed wing model or your multi-rotor, then every two minutes you're gonna cover a mile. Now from the kind of testing I've done here, let's kind of give you a rough idea what that looks like. A 2200 milliamp hour LiPo, a standard one, is gonna give me about 20 minutes flight time in a lot of the wings that I'm flying with pretty standard setups. Going for a 21700 pack, that's gonna increase that to about 44 minutes, but then this is a 4,200 milliamp hour pack compared to a 2,200 milliamp hour pack. If we compare that to something like a classic 
18650 pack. Typically, 3000 milliamp hours is about right for that. That's going to give me just over 32 minutes of flying. And then, if we go for one of the big boys, something like an 18650 pack, a 2P pack, which is 7000 milliamp hour setup. This is going to give me over 74 minutes of flight time. So you can see how the really long flight times are typically coming from the lithium ion packs. Bottom line, as I said at the beginning, it's all about how many milliamp hours you can physically fit inside your wing. Things like the AR Wing Pro were designed for packs like this to give you incredibly long flight times. But these are physically long packs and the way it fits in the AR Wing Pro is it kind of goes laterally across like that. However, there are smaller models that I've been playing and struggling with, like the Diatone Ripper, where initially the only thing I could fit in was a 4S1300 pack, but now thanks to Tattoo, with their long range stuff, I can now fit in a 2200. Now, most of the stuff that's on the bench that I've shown here today are available at places like 3DXR. I'll put links down below. I know that 3DXR have some more of these tattoo batteries on order. Uh, so hopefully they'll get some more in soon. I'll be ordering another one or two when they do. So thanks for watching. And now hopefully you've got a couple of ideas if you want to squeeze more milliamp hours into your model for longer flight times. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.